Hi guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited, it's a long time coming. Today is, as you can see by the title, about my labour story. I am going to do a get to know me video. My YouTube is going to be with my husband Adonis and my little one. He's not going to be on for a while because he's a bit busy with work. Um, so I thought I'll just get my YouTube channel sorted um, and started because it's talking about my label video anyway so he won't really be in it. Um, I'm going to bring Anaya in at the end. Um, she is four months so it's a bit of a late video um, but you know I was just trying to get back on my feet really. I get so many messages about how did my labour go, um, so many people ask me so I thought I might as well just do a video. Let's just get into it. What I'm going to talk about is how my pregnancy went, how my labour went and my delivery and all of that. So my pregnancy went amazing, you know, I had no issues with it whatsoever. So the first trimester, um, I did feel a bit nauseous, I was so tired. When I say I was tired, I was going to sleep on the tube, like I was missing my stops. You know the underground is so loud, so I don't know how I was doing that, but um, I was going to sleep on the tube. That's really it, I was just tired and I felt a bit sick. I wasn't actually physically sick during my whole pregnancy. So I had actually an amazing pregnancy. Um, my second trimester, same, no, no problems at all. Third trimester, ugh, you do feel a bit slumpy and it was the time when it was the heat wave, right? So I was just hot, oh yeah, I got a really bad rash. Um, on my belly. I thought it was something to do with my liver, but they'd done the blood test and said it was just fine, it was just a heat rash. So I got, yeah, I got really bad heat rash. Um, it was a bad time. Anyway, so my actual due date was on 8th of September. So my waters actually broke on the 4th of September. So what happened is I went to the bathroom and, you know, saw the blood, called up the the midwife and she was like, yeah, go in. Um, just to check it out. So I went in, um, I was getting a little bit of like, it felt like period pains, literally just felt like period pain. I was like, oh, if this is labour then, pff, little did I know, little did I know. So yeah, so I went to the, went to the hospital, she done a test and she said actually my waters had broke. What she had basically done is like, I don't really know the full details but it was like trickling with water, like it was like a tiny little like pop. Technically, um, they had to like follow by the rules because I had actually, you know, my waters had actually broken. So they said we could either induce you now or, um, mine's gone blank. Um, or you could go home, um, actually let your, you know, contractions come more frequently, like just so, like just speed it up. So I decided to go home because obviously like I needed to just sort out 101 things. So I went home, put up a Moses basket. Um, so they said come back the next day um, at 7 a.m. But you know, if anything happens before then just come in. So I was like, okay, cool. So that actual day my sister was with me um, and obviously my husband. We went for a couple walks around this massive field. Um, we were doing like loads of exercises, like squats, like I wasn't in that much pain like at that point. I was actually kind of scared to walk because I thought this baby just gonna jump out of me, my water's basically broken. But sounds ridiculous, but I was yeah, I was kinda scared to walk. I went home, done her Moses basket, got everything sorted, like, you know, made the place look nice and ready for her. Um that night, it was the worst night of my life. It was the contractions were so bad, you know, there was, oh, like, I remember I didn't go to sleep at all. Literally, they would last for like two, three minutes, like, I was in agony. Like, I was on the floor, I was just like in a ball, just trying to get the position right so it wouldn't hurt as much. This was, and I was just like, you know, I got to like 4am and I was like, I don't know if I can take it any longer, like, I really feel like I've you know, waited the whole night just so I could dilate a bit more. No, at this point, I thought it was like six centimeters dilated. It's like it was, I was in that much pain. So I was just like, okay, like, I don't think I could take it anymore. Um, so called up the hospital. They were like, we're full. So you had to go to a one that's like 30 minutes away. So I had to go all the way there. Um, 
So I obviously didn't have any of my details booked in there um, because it was a you know new hospital. So it did take them a while to get me like settled in. So once I was settled in, I had my room, um, my sister, my husband. I was induced. So um, they broke my waters, um, and then from then they just kind of waited for my. I was only oh yeah sorry I was only two centimeters dilated two centimeters so I was like I was actually really gutted like if this is only two centimeters how am I gonna do all the way up to ten like I feel like my body physically can't do it and then we just waited a while um, and then no my contractions got so bad like so I don't really cry like n like I don't think my mom's even seen me cry like I don't cry and I was like my sister has like never really seen me cry as well and I was just screaming like I'm gonna put a, a small video in so you can see mind how I look because I look terrible um, but yeah I was screaming I was crying I made um, Adonis kind of like rub my feet just distracting me so he was just like rubbing my feet massaging my feet um, I had gas in there like the whole time I had gas in there they put um what's it called the thing they put in your hand basically into your vein um, I don't know how I forgot that but yeah they put it into your hand so they're just um, giving me painkillers I guess I, I don't know that was just in there yeah from that point it was just getting so bad I was like on the ball at one point um, bouncing on there and then yeah just after after I did the ball thing <laughs> I wish I never did it so because I was in so much pain they checked again after like two hours actually well I basically like got induced at like 9am yeah just like the whole day they kept checking kept checking I was not moving like it was literally two centimeters two centimeters I was just like how like I feel like I'm getting the worst contractions I don't know how it's not you know pushing from two eight like two centimeters like I was I was so confused so what they decided to do I think I was I think I went to like two and a half centimeters um they decided to put the, um, I had epidural, they really scare you, they're like, you cannot move. Every single um, contraction, I'm like, you know, moving, going crazy, like, how am I going to stay still? I did not move. You don't feel it, like, you, you literally don't, I don't, I don't remember it even, like, the pain of it at all. Probably a tiny pain, but, you know, when you've got contractions, you don't really think about it. They put the epidural in, and, oh my god, I knocked out yeah I was so exhausted to be fair I didn't really like knock out for long because my sister and my husband were just bickering and being annoying and my midwife just saying could you guys just get out she actually needs to rest yeah so I didn't really go to sleep much and then my cousin came um my mum and my dad because it was quite far they were just like just tell me when it's like because I didn't want too many people in the room anyway I just literally wanted them three people yeah, as soon as I put the epidural in, I didn't feel no pain, all the contractions didn't feel anything. I was like, cool, I can stay on this till like 10 centimeters and I won't feel anything, I'm fine. You top up your epidural like every hour, I'm guessing. Like, every, I mean, when you feel a little bit of pain, that's when you had to top it up again. Um, every time they kept topping it up, um, the baby's heart um, rate kept going really low. I can't really remember what it kept going down to, but it went really low. So what happened is, every time it would go low, it will start beeping and I think it would go into the main room where all the doctors were so I literally like about three four doctors will come in every time um, it would be day four um, she kept wrapping herself in the umbilical cord so they were just like moving me around just so she could you know breathe properly I guess so yeah I did that about three four times every time it kept happening they were just you know it was it was quite serious they were just like why does it keep happening 
um, she's been really cheeky. So this kept, kept going on for hours, right? And then it got to about quarter to six um, and it happened again, but this time it went really low. Um, like about 12 doctors came in, literally 12 doctors came in and they were like, they literally looked at me and they were, they were obviously doing their observations and all of that. And they took off all my stuff. We're taken to surgery now. We're gonna we're gonna do a um, emergency C-section. I broke down. Like I was just like I was. Sh oh my god! I was shaking. I don't shake. Like I was. I've just never happened to me before. I was shaking. Everything was going through my head. Like I just thought about the pain I was gonna be in. Oh, I just I was scared. Um. So my husband came with me. He had to go and get dressed and put on that blue thing. Yeah, he had to put that all on and they took me in but they were talking to me they were so nice they were talking to me the whole time so they all said like oh their name um their role what they were gonna do um they were all talking to me like like it's gonna be fine you're not gonna feel anything you you're gonna feel a bit of tugging but you're gonna be numb like you're not gonna feel anything it's fine it's fine so they kind of cover you like so you don't see what's going on so you can obviously like from your belly downwards they, they like put like a sheet up so he was next to me um i think they put epidural in me again I, I don't know i can't remember what happened oh they took it out yeah i think they took it out actually and they numbed me like i don't know how they did it I remember i kept saying to him keep talking to me like whatever you do don't stop talking to me I literally so i went in theatre at six o'clock she uh, she was born at six o four. She's worth it. I don't think it's going to take too long any longer. Did you want vitamin K for her? Yeah. The, yeah, the injection, yeah? Okay, we'll start the cells again. Baba. Baba. Cutie. So Adonis um, cut the umbilical cord and then he came back around with the baby like oh my god I remember like I can't explain the feeling but you're just like no like how did she look like that she doesn't even look like my baby she just looks so precious like oh I was just like I don't had how did I do it a million emotions are going through my head at that point I was just like to, I was shouting at Adonis I was like I can't see her I can't like I can't move all I can do is move my head and you're not coming in the right position like I was just being moany he had to go with a midwife and weigh her um and you know I think they get an injection or something about that my battery died during that point I felt like he was gone for so long like he was gone the whole time actually he was gone the whole time after that and I was just like oh can someone else come with me like can someone else come in like I'm so scared and they were like no 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 one else can come and so because I was cut open it sounds silly but because I was cut open I felt like I couldn't breathe like I was like if I breathe like I don't know my organs are gonna go everywhere like oh. <laughs> I felt like I couldn't breathe so I was doing this I was going the whole time the whole time 20 minutes breathing like that um and my mouth was so dry like i i couldn't even swallow like just like i need a drink so i was like to a lady like that was just behind me i was like i need a drink like i need some water or something so she got like a little syringe <laughs> right she, she put like two drops in my mouth literally like drop drop it was it was torture i was like just get me out of it one thing I'm really confused about is they didn't really ask me to do skin to skin with an AR. Is that's when um, they put the baby, you know, no clothes or nothing on your chest. Um, it's just a way of them to feel comfort, to get your bond when you first, you know, see your child. They didn't do that, um, so I was a bit, a bit annoyed about that. But um, when they pushed me out of the theatre, they gave me an AR. But because they just like stitched me up there I was just scared to hold her and put her down there so I had her like really high up I was like this I was like <laughs> then they took me to it was like my own little ward at that point because they were like well, you just had an operation so it's just gonna be you and I'm not joking every two seconds I press this buzzer I was in like oh my god it's oh it's just really bad pain like I'm, I'm not trying to scare anyone who is pregnant or watching this but like it's really bad pain I felt like I was 
I was I couldn't breathe because I was in so much pain. I was like, I can't actually breathe. Like I'm in so much pain. Like, I was crying. Like it was in the night. So Adonis stayed with me as well. I wanted to breastfeed, so I was like trying to do that. But when you do that, like you get contractions as well. It kind of like put me off because I was already in so much pain. And when I tried to breastfeed, like it was he was getting worse because obviously like it's just yeah it's the contraction so i did it that that night i got to the next day they put me in the normal ward with like everyone else and you know they i couldn't really walk i couldn't really look after and they are really get up like i couldn't really do anything for her so every like there was always someone with me um the whole day because i couldn't do it my camera keeps shutting not because it's dying it's because it's too hot I didn't realise. I think it was like two days later, um, they tried to help me walk again. I could probably do like two steps and I was even getting up off the bed is, it took me like 15 minutes. Like, you know, it's a hard mission because you just feel like you, as soon as you like strain, you're going to rip a stitch. So what kept happening is I was on, I was on the jet for a while. They were just giving me fluids um, and yeah, I wasn't really on normal tablets. I was just on fluids. So that's how they were like feeding me. I kept getting like really bad fevers. Every time that kept happening, they said that I had to stay another 24 hours. This got so frustrating. Yeah, because every single day, like you're like, I'm gonna go home now. No, they said, no, you're staying in again. What was getting wrong is they wasn't really telling me what was wrong. They were just like, oh, you got like, your temperature's gone high again, you have to stay in again. Like, I was just like, what the hell? So I think I was a couple of days went by and I was still in like really bad pain and I you know, I kept getting really bad pain on my right hand side. I said to the um, doctor like I'm getting really bad pain down here um, and she was like oh it's normal um, it's just the way they stitched you up. Okay I'm gonna listen to you. So a couple of days went by kept saying the same thing kept saying I was getting a little bit frustrated at this point because I was like you're saying that I need to stay in but you're not telling me what's wrong um they were like we just don't know like, it just takes a while sometimes for some people to adjust and at this point like it was a little bit hard because adonis was staying with me um but he couldn't stay like every night luckily my sister was down my cousin would stay with me sometimes um i got one of my friends to stay with me i'd make sure i was never alone not one day not one second i would be alone a couple of days went by and they said we're gonna take out um I can't remember what it's called but they took it out the drip thing every time they took it out I got really ill so when like my fever would just come back but it wasn't just the fever I would get pain so I would start screaming again like it just felt like the labor all over again and every time they took it out they were like we're gonna try and give you like normal tablets they tried it for like, a couple hours and it was so high every single time they had to keep putting it back in there was one point when I was in so much pain I don't really remember I just remember screaming in the middle of the night I felt so so bad like all newborn babies and I'm just there screaming that night they like tried to put the um, drip back in my veins my veins kept popping I had bruises all over my body as the days went by they kept trying to take it out put it back in take it out put it back in two weeks down the line I was still there one of the doctors came back in again and um, so waiting for an actual doctor you see them like once a day you're surrounded by nurses midwives so I, yeah so this one doctor I said to her like I'm like, I've got really bad pain like on my in my stomach, like on the right hand side again, like, and it's not going away. And then she like kind of like did something, like you know, they do like they did that all over my um, stomach just to check it out, and like it hurt. They booked me a um, like an ultrasound, so um, I went down to the ultrasound, and they saw like they thought it was like a little blood clot. So they were like, oh, it's you know it's fine it should go and um, they looked at that the doctor came back and they were like we're gonna do like a ct scan just to double check and see what it is they checked that and what they saw is that i had a hematoma so it's like a blood clot but it's not it's like a, a big collection of blood like it doesn't really go that easily um so what they said is it's quite big it was eight centimeters that night they said we're gonna do an operation um so we're gonna open up your stitches again and take it out or we're gonna put like a big needle in and like drain it out both of them things i was like really so the next morning they gave me their clothes to put on they said by 9 9 a.m you should 
be infertile really so the specialist comes in I don't even know what specialist but he comes in and he's like well I don't think we're going to do operation because um, they want it to go naturally they're like we're going to change your antibiotics and we believe this will help and it will go I just had like kind of woken up so I was just like oh it's a bit annoying but all right okay I'm, I'm quite shy so I don't really like confrontation so my husband had actually gone out at that point he came back and he was like uh, I was told him like the specialist came and they said he was like what why did you call me I basically asked the midwife I was like I want that pill what I want to do is tell this out we and they say no um so she was like I'm gonna call him again um and yeah and then you can speak to him because they kind of understood where i'm coming from like i was there for about two and a half weeks now like i just wanted to go home like there, there must have been another way out he came back and i was just like my partner had actually gone out again um and i was like you know what i'm gonna grow some balls just gonna tell them like i'd, I'd want something to be done and i was just like yeah like i think we should either have the operation or you need to find so i just want to go home a hematoma is not going to go in three four days it's going to take ages i'm going to be here for a couple days for no reason i'm going home he was just like okay like obviously i can see you're frustrated and like i, I understand like let me just give me like 10 minutes i'm gonna figure something out for you and come back so he comes back um and he's like well the drip that you're on um it was two different ones. He goes, the first one we can get in um, tablets, but the second one we can't, so you need to be on the drips. I think he said, um, you can go home during the day, but in the night you have to come and stay here. To be fair, I was happy with that. I finally got to go home. I still kept the room I was in, they put me in a private room. I went home that day and I came back in the evening to get my drip. Um, and. They were like, oh, um, you can like take all your stuff. It says on the, the book, you don't need to stay here. All you need to do is come here at 9 p.m. Um, every evening, get your drip done, and you can go back home. I was like, what? Yeah, like, that's amazing. So for 10 days, I was getting the drip done every evening. Um, I had antibiotics dosed stuff at home. As soon as I came home, believe it or not, I didn't actually get a fever. I didn't like... I was, I felt fine, obviously I was ill still, I couldn't get up and do all that with that but in regards to me getting my temperature going high, it didn't happen when I was at home at all. A bit down to be fair, like I felt like I was a bit, I had a bit of postnatal depression, only because I was in that surrounding kind of, like, it was just depressing, like I had like a newborn baby and I was just in the hospital still like, so after about three and a half weeks, I finally got discharged. I do have to go back here and there to get um, like checkups. So I did have a CT scan um, at like um, like a month after I got discharged, and they said it had only gone down to um, six and a half centimeters. So we're just gonna give it a couple months and check them because I feel like it's not gonna do much if we check every single month. And I was like, okay, fair enough. Um, so I just actually had a CT scan the other day. Um, I haven't really heard the results back, so I do need to call them actually. I kind of lose the feeling where you have your um, cesarean, so I don't know, don't know if it's just like the numb feeling or it's just pain. I still obviously get pain. Like, I can't really go back to gym yet because I feel like I'm just going to stretch or lift something heavy and it's going to rip open. I'm back on my feet now, getting back to the normal life. What I'm going to do is bring a Naya in here. Okay, look at my hair. Naya! She's a bit ill right now. We had to shave her hair so she's like, it's growing back slowly. Right, her dad's gonna call her. Yo, Nene. Nene. Where? Yo, baby girl. You so pretty. You so cute. You're so cute and pretty. Oh my gosh. You're gonna come in quick. Oh. Oh. So, this is our little family. Are you gonna do a lot of family videos? I'm gonna join a few of them. I won't lie. I'm a bit shy. He won't be shy. I will embrace him, his confidence. Um, but yeah, say bye. Thank you for watching.